Welcome back, Darwin Conley, Director of Agent Performance and Development. And what we're going to look at next is the condominium slash site condominium, otherwise single family residential dwellings developed under condominium laws as an addendum to the agreement of sale. So what we know is it's a condo, we have this. If it's a site condo, again, single family residential dwelling that has a legal description that says unit number, this will need to accompany it. This is something that we're going to post in the MLS with our disclosures so that when somebody writes an offer, if they do not have this, we will have it there for them to complete. Let's talk simply what it is, what goes into it. The date, what is the address, what is the legal description? We know it's gonna say unit number. By, this is where the purchasers are gonna put their name. Seller's name, using the proper systems, will already be placed in here, as you see. And then it's saying, this is an addendum that's gonna be part of the purchase agreement agreement of sale. Following is and are to be considered as part of the above referenced agreement of sale. Seller agrees to furnish the purchaser master deed bylaws amendments and most recent financial statements of the condominium association. So when we took the listing, this is why we're getting all this information. So just remember, this is going to accompany, we're asking all agents who write an offer to have this addendum accompany their purchase agreement. Now it says, this offer is contingent upon the purchase and inspection of the and approval of the master deed bylaws, amendments, most financial, all the stuff that we said that we've got. Such inspection and approval shall be made within blank calendar days. I'm gonna suggest five as a reasonable amount of time for the delivery of said documents to the purchaser. Delivery shall be in care of the selling broker within blank days after purchaser's receipt of the seller's acceptance of this offer. Unless purchaser notifies seller in writing in care of selling broker within the number of days stipulated of the purchaser's dissatisfaction. Oh, by the way, five and five is what we're going to do here. This consent she shall be deemed to have been waived and transaction shall proceed to consummation as specified herein. Upon proper notification in writing of purchase dissatisfaction, this agreement shall be canceled and all earnest money deposited shall be returned to the purchase upon execution of a mutual release. So you've got to get them to us within a certain amount of time. We get so much time to review and then state whether or not we are dissatisfied. If we don't do anything, we're satisfied. That's what it's stating. Working capital. It is mutually agreed that the condominium association funds, variously described as working capital, initial operating deposit, reserve account, capital expenditures, seller's equity and condominium dues fees shall be included. So there's this fund there that often is in a, a we hardly ever see it. It's about the condominium association and them being able to maintain all the things that the association is responsible for. This is saying all that money is being transferred over to the new purchaser. Association fee. This is more of a disclosure than is anything else. Purchase aware that there is a monthly association fee in the amount of blank dollars, and you should put, you know, is that monthly, is it annual, how is it uh, actually set up? And that that fee is subject to change. So it really is simply a disclosure to the buyer as to the amount. Status and transfer fee. See, to be able to get a report as to, you know, are they current in their dues, things of this nature, uh, there's a fee, uh, I would guess 350 to $500 that a management company, a condo management company may charge a seller to be able to get this report. They're simply agreeing to be able to pay for the necessary information to be able to 
get clear title. Lastly, private road purchases put on notice that many of the roads in a condominium complex or development are private roads. If the roads are, in fact, private roads, seller hereby notifies the purchaser as required by sector da, 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 that if the property abuts or will abut to a road that is a private road, same is not required to be maintained by the Board of County Road Commissioner, Commissioners. Otherwise, you're on your own. An instrument containing this notification shall be attached to any document conveying any interest in the property. The private road, if not already constructed, shall be located substantially as depicted on the site plan, which the purchaser has approved. And again, that's in all the documents that we got right up at this point. Outside of that, we're going to have our seller sign it at the time of the listing. When we're getting everything signed, seller's signing it. If you see it, you witness it. If you didn't, you don't witness it. Sellers will sign. We upload it to the MLS documents so that everything gets completed. Pretty simple, one-page document. I hope it all makes sense. You know what to do. Go be productive.